distal forearm, but there are a whole range of fracture sites, the proximal humerus, pelvis, scapula, clavicle, and a variety of other sites that now are associated with low bone density. These fractures taken together affect quality of life, they impact on functional decline, loss of independence, and mortality. And perhaps most importantly, the third um, section of this slide, they are costly. In the European Union, in a report using data from 2010 that was published in 2014, we estimated that the costs of fragility fractures throughout the European Union was 32 billion euros each year. This compares with a cost of 20 billion US dollars each year. And together, these are an important economic as well as healthcare burden. Next slide, please. Now, one of the important pieces of information that we've gathered since we mapped out the epidemiology of these fractures 10 years ago and we've characterized their burden on healthcare services has been this so-called care gap. We know that we have a high incidence of fragility fractures and I've pointed out the total um, health and economic burden. But we also know now, exemplified in that European Union report in the archives of osteoporosis, that a substantial proportion of patients at high risk are not actually evaluated and treated. As great as 80% of patients with a sentinel fracture are left unmanaged for assessment of future fracture risk and intervention to reduce that risk. And really, uh, fracture liaison services and secondary fracture prevention aim to fill that care gap. Next slide, please. Fracture liaison services have been shown to be effective and cost-saving. When I initiated the fracture working group of the IOF Committee of Scientific Advisors, I instated a systematic review of the literature, which was published in Osteoporosis International in 2011, that mapped out from the 48 published descriptions of fracture liaison services worldwide, the components that characterize success and the roles of these services. And the roles shown here entail identification, investigation, initiation of treatment and fall prevention, and insurance of adherence to therapy. And although these different liaison services have different models, for example, some might have a nurse coordinator in a secondary care setting. Others might be based in primary care, yet others might be based with the imaging services, the radiologists, or be linked to other specialist services or even the third party payer. But the cross-disciplinarity of this um, work and the extent to which the FLS coordinator identifies, investigates, initiates and ensures adherence uh, lies at the heart of the effectiveness of a particular fracture liaison service. Next slide, please. So having undertaken that systematic review of the literature and published it, we formulated the Capture the Fracture campaign. And in its structure, it has three broad components. First, a, a series of measures to set standards. Second, measures to facilitate change. And third, measures to raise awareness. Uh, let's go through these one at a time. Next slide, please. So in terms of setting the standards, the program relied upon the delineation through an expert panel of a best practice framework. And I'll show you this in greater detail in a little bit a little bit later in the talk, but this comprises 13 internationally endorsed standards which allow us to evaluate different aspects of the FLS and to grade them broadly in terms of their um, level of activity. Uh, gradings that range from bronze through silver 
to gold. Information on the FLS that's applying is obtained by a structured questionnaire, and that questionnaire asks a series of questions with closed answers, often with a Likert scale, so you pick option A, B, C, D, or E for each of the descriptors around the 13 internationally endorsed standards, and that questionnaire has been translated into a whole series of languages, and from it, two trained observers characterize the categories within which that particular best practice framework falls. The, the, um, the, the results of that center's performance are then put on a map which illustrates the FLS achievements according to a summary grade, a gold, a silver, or a bronze star. So if we go to the next slide, the purpose of the best practice framework is to set the standard, to provide guidance, and to serve as a benchmark for future fine-tuning. Next slide, thanks. The 13 categories are shown here. On the left-hand side, you see that they go from patient identification, evaluation, post-fracture assessment timing, the presence of a vertebral fracture component, guidelines for risk assessment, evaluation of secondary causes of osteoporosis, the provision of a fall prevention service, multifactorial assessment, physiotherapist, occupational therapist, and so forth, initiation of medication, review of medication, a communication strategy, the availability of long-term follow-up, and the provision of a database. And for the questions that describe each of these 13 standards, the levels are provided for two as examples. So patient identification, the lowest level of achievement would be patients identified but not tracked. The next level, patients identified and tracked. And the next level, patients identified, tracked, and undergoing independent review of their, um, uh, their record. For medication initiation, thresholds for bronze at 50%, silver at 70% initiated, and gold at 90% of patients with medication initiation. So for each of the 13, there are these three different levels that have been assigned and which are graded from the FLS questionnaire by our two central graders who then reach a synthesis. And within five domains, we actually have the ability to characterize the, the grades, and I'll show you those domains when we get to look at the results of the first um, 68 completed centers. Next slide, thanks. So, if we were a center, let us say in Spain or in France or in Italy or in the United Kingdom, we submit our online application, a star is placed on our center in green on the map, we have our best practice framework level of achievement within each of the 13 categories assigned, and each of those categories are also characterized in different domains, inpatient, outpatient, vertebral fracture, hip fracture, and the system management as a whole. And the integration of the scores for those five domains lead to one summary star score, gold, silver, or bronze. And we've made the interaction at this stage uh, very strong between the center and the individual um, th that's applying. By the center, I mean IOF head office and our unit. So that if, say, you have applied from, from a, a, a hospital outside, and we've graded as, say, silver, and the component grades are at various levels, we communicate that, first of all, individually to the center lead. That individual says whether th that they feel that this is appropriate. They comment on our inference about their FLS and the political context within which that falls, because ultimately our objective is to facilitate increased utilization of FLS in each of the nation states that we serve. And so, after that recognition on the map, um, we have this iterative process that reaches the final uh, grading. 
and then that's illustrated, next slide, on the map of best practice. And you'll see here that we have representation from North America, from the United States and Canada, Latin America, large numbers from Europe, all over from Northern through to Southern Europe, and indeed a smattering of places in Oceania, Australia, New Zealand, and indeed in the Asia Pacific region. Of course, there's work to be done given the number of national societies in our membership, but we've made a fantastic start with this. So, next slide, participation. Why should a centre be interested in this? Well, they can showcase their own achievement. They can help to support the implementation of fracture liaison services worldwide and they can create a visual message of the services and opportunities. And we have been astonished at the enthusiasm of centres to participate in this. Normally, we have difficulty motivating places to uh, come on board with some of our initiatives. In the case of Capture the Fracture, it has really caught the imagination. This is an idea whose time has come. It applies to any coordinator-based system of care, inpatient and or outpatient facilities, any stage of development, but generally we would need about a minimum of 100 fracture patients in order that we have enough data to apply the standards. But as you'll see in a moment, our results show us that um, uh, the, the, the take-up is worldwide and there is huge variation in the size of the services that have been uh, logged in with us. So, next slide, we move to the second category, facilitation of change. So there are three components to this, the provision of um, tools, the provision of a mentorship program, and a grant program. The slide kits and toolkits are already prepared at IOF for Capture the Fracture, and they will help healthcare professionals implement an FLS from scratch. This webinar is simply one of a series of tools available to assist in implementation and respond to questions about the program. And the mentorship program will help establish a connection between established services and new ones so that wisdom gained in the established services can be spread to the new ones. And lastly, we aim to provide financial support to help the sustainable implementation of FLS, which is a very important consideration once the initial hurdle has been crossed of getting a service running. Next, please. In terms of the toolkits, these educate and promote the need for secondary fracture prevention and characterize the effective FLSs around. Uh, the, the, the toolkit guides healthcare professionals, health administrators, and policymakers, and indeed is of considerable assistance in providing a business case locally for the provision of the FLS. Next. The translations have been undertaken in uh, many languages in addition to English. You can see here Chinese, French, Italian, Japanese, Russian and Spanish. Next, thanks. Awareness is raised through the interactive website. This is a primary resource on secondary fracture prevention for the entire international community. From surveys of the literature and epidemiology, um, research publications of which there are three already from this initiative, as well as all of the founding material that comprise the initial literature review. And then the International Coalition of Partners, which provides consensus on effective models of care uh, around the world. Next, thanks. The three papers are the original coordinator-based system for secondary prevention systematic review, OI 2011, David Marsh as our founding chair of the Fracture Working Group. Then, a paper in Osteoporosis International in 2013 describing the best practice framework and the Capture the Fracture campaign. And thirdly, a paper that's currently under review showing our initial results. So let's move on to those as part of my uh, closing section. Next slide, please. 
we now have 128 fracture liaison services registered on the map, and the countries that they belong to are shown in the right-hand column. And you'll see from Algeria to the USA, the global distribution illustrated diagrammatically. 68 have been completely graded interaction undertaken between IOF and the individual center, and of those, 13 have an overall grade of bronze, 26 silver, and 29 gold. The remaining 60 are currently under review, and we're getting through them really quite fast. Next, please. The population covered by these services ranges from 100,000, really quite small, to 1.3 million, enormous. There's a mix of private and publicly funded hospitals, and the range of fracture patients varies annualized from 181 to 6,200. You see the distribution of the overall star ratings that I um, stated to you previously, the 13, 26, and 29, that are about 20% for bronze and 40% for silver and gold, respectively. Next slide. Within the five domains, hip fracture, inpatient, outpatient services, vertebral fracture, and organization, the first four show a very, sorry, the first three and organization show a very similar gradation of bronze, silver, and gold. Gold is most applicable to the hip fracture services, is there for inpatient and outpatient services, and for organization as a whole. The weakest performing, the, the highest frequency of bronze, is in vertebral fracture services. And it's quite clear that these services have begun for non-spine fractures, principally hip and then other non-spine fractures, and the challenge is going to be to extend them to the large number of vertebral fractures in the community. Next slide, thanks. So what are our objectives for this year and beyond? Within the webinars, we aim to um, cover IOF and capture the fracture program. That's basically this one. The second will describe in greater detail the implementation of an FLS. We'll then cover the best practice recognition framework in great detail. <coughs> and then lastly, talk about success stories. The mentorship program will sponsor a training day for new fracture liaison services at which members can interact with uh, established FLS um, sort of workforce at a country level. And the grant program uh, is looking to sponsorship for 2015 and beyond to facilitate continued implementation of FLS and sustained implementation of FLS once incepted. I'd just like to close, next slide please, by thanking the Capture the Fracture Steering Committee at IOF, uh, my co-chair Christina Ackerson, who's a professor of orthopedic surgery at the Scania University Hospital in Sweden, and has been through the entire program with me since its inception in 2009 as the original uh, review from the Fracture Working Group. Dr. Alastair McClellan, who pioneered the Glasgow model of the Gardner Institute Western Infirmary in the United Kingdom. Dr. Paul Mitchell from Synthesis Medical, who has been a great champion of secondary fracture prevention strategies internationally and has recently secured New Zealand government recognition for a capture the fracture approach to secondary prevention and FLS provision. Dr. Kasim Javed, who is the UK's national advisor at the Royal College of Physicians on secondary fracture prevention. Uh, and then my colleagues at IOF head office, of course, Judy Stenmark, the chief executive, Dominic Piero, our science manager, and Muriel Schneider, who has put together uh, the program and set up this particular webinar. I'm grateful to all of them, as well as the research assistant support we've had from Charlotte Moss here at my own unit in Southampton. And of course, it would be unfair to close without a deep 
heartfelt thanks to all of our corporate um, partners. So Amgen, Lily, Merck, and Servier, many thanks. Just to remind you, for those of you that have the opportunity to visit the fashion capital of the world in a week's time, that there will be two courses in Milan. Um, one will be specifically to train models of care for fracture liaison services on 26th of March, um, and the other will be an osteoporosis essentials densitometry diagnosis and management course on the 25th and 26th of March. This is the joint course between ourselves and the ISCD. I look forward to meeting many of you in Milan. I look forward to chatting with others of you in the half hour to come and wish you extremely well with the inception of these services in your own countries. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Cyrus, for this outstanding presentation. And now we are ready to do the Q&A. So if you have any question you would like to ask to Cyrus, please type it into the question box and I will voice it to him. So first question would be, what are the conditions to join the program? Well, I think we want to keep the entry to this program very wide. And so you complete the questionnaire. You then respond to the committee's uh, comments that are given to you from the Capture the Fracture Committee. Uh, you agree that your anonymized data is shared, but that we don't provide uh, the, 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 the country for any publication, and you optionally agree for data to be shared on the online map. Thank you. Another question is about what would be the benefit from being part of the program from different sites, from the patients and others? Well, I think there's absolutely no doubt, and this applies to our own fracture liaison services locally, that the patients are struck by how excellent it is that there's continuity of care from their initiating sentinel fracture to risk assessment and treatment. And they document this as a high quality criterion to the service. For the local healthcare provider, it's really important that they close the care gap in a cost-effective manner. And as I've mentioned, but haven't had a chance to illustrate in greater detail, probably the best marker of your future fracture risk after your age and before you get to measurement of your bone density is whether you've had a previous fracture. So that here is a very readily accessible risk marker that allows us to cost effectively target densitometry and cost effectively target treatment to the patients at highest risk. And healthcare funders are appreciative of that. And lastly, for the IOF, it allows us the opportunity to integrate data on secondary prevention on a global level from national experiences, and of course, this is important to us in sort of establishing policy. Thank you, Cyrus. One other question would be, what are the next steps for the CTF program? Well, as I've illustrated for you, we can take these in a number of different, um, a number of different ways. I mean, we, we clearly need to establish much more effective mentorship so that initiating centers get the experience of established centers. And one of the helpful things for that is that we're in the process of establishing some national champions who know the picture in their own country and can use other submitted service models to educate their own constituencies where there's less experience on the ground. Of course, we'll be publishing the resource variability. We'll have case reports of how Capture the Fracture has improved services, and we're just in the process of formulating a survey of the first set of FLSs to see how they're getting on. Um, we've targeted an N of 300 for 2015. And we'll continue to put our outputs in scientific journals as and when the observations are sufficiently great. Okay, thank you. Another question is really to understand that most of the healthcare system are different across the world. So how can IOF, through the Capture the Fracture program, can really set the standard internationally? 
Well, I think that's one of the prime motivations for establishing um, such an initiative. As we move from very different systems in different localities, by having this stepwise approach right from identification of the patient through managing the entire um, system with these 13 standards, there's much greater likelihood that we'll be able to move towards an optimization of these services and generate a global best practice, which is after all what the framework is, is about doing. Thank you. Another question is about, can, can we get insight in which hospital have an FLS connected or reviewed by CTF, for example in the Netherlands? Yes, I, well, I, I guess that we know that um, national toolkits have incorporated the capture the fracture sort of um, story in several countries. So Canada has done that, the United States has, New Zealand has, Australia has. In fact, just a couple of weeks ago I was in Chicago at a joint meeting of the ISCD with some uh, NOF representation and there was great discussion about the way in which secondary fracture prevention was progressing in, in the States and utilizing the kinds of models that we're developing. Osteoporosis Canada has actually inserted CTF within its quality standards for secondary prevention. New Zealand has encouraged centres to register on our map and the Ministry of Health has established fora for all of the district health boards in New Zealand, pioneered by Paul Mitchell's work with us. And the National Bone Health Alliance in the US has highlighted CTF in their Fracture Prevention Central initiative, uh, which has oh, over 2,500 users on their website. Thank you, Cyrus. Another question from the audience is asking what evidence or outcomes can I use to provide business case for a hospital? So I think that that's, that's a topic which is much more for individual liaison with the office, but broadly speaking, the story that works entails illustrating in a step-by-step -step manner the number of sentinel fractures you have in a year, the likelihood, the risk, that those people will have a second fracture, the number of those second fractures that are saved, and the cost effectiveness of that policy. And in the United Kingdom, when those extrapolations have been made, it's been estimated that not only is there a very low cost per quality adjusted life year saved or fracture averted, there's actually a cost saving to the tune of some five million pounds. Thank you, Cyrus. Another question is about how does IOF work with the national societies to maximize the impact of the capture the fracture lesion? The, the FLS. The so, the, the Fracture Working Group and our Capture the Fracture Coordinating Committee, of course, feed in on a regular basis to the Committee of National Societies and, as I mentioned, our growing body of national champions, who are people who are experienced in secondary prevention and who enable that link to be made with their local community. So we recently had an entire network that we were approached about within, within France, which was fantastically pleasing to hear about. And there, there was a natural um, sort of lead individual. And I would hope that we see this develop, you know, throughout, uh, the, throughout, throughout the global community, where we have a national level person who brokers the relationship between our central Capture the Fracture Committee and the, the constituency on the ground. Thank you, Cyrus. One last question, and if you have any more questions, please uh, write them down in the question box. It's how can a company be involved in the CTF program? Well, I mean, I think as with many areas in which we work in IOF, um, this is a a multi-stakeholder partnership. It's in all of our interests. If I were a patient with osteoporosis, that's the starting point, I would want the people who are engaged in the development of strategies to reduce fracture 
to be working with the health professionals and med medical professionals who are delivering the services to prevent fracture. And I think here there is such a sort of such an overlap of, of goals with regard to secondary prevention that we would welcome uh, support and collaboration with all of our corporate partners, basically drop us an email, drop Judy an email, Muriel an email, myself an email, and we will talk about exactly how we can engage both in terms of the global corporate organizations or the country-specific corporate organizations uh, in terms of sponsoring CTF and encouraging centers who are desperate to set up a fracture liaison service. I was, I was in Madrid just passing through um, at the beginning of this week and I opened an entire day, wonderfully organized by Amgen, uh, for, for Spanish physicians and surgeons interested in setting up FLS um, in, in, in their country. And there, there were, there, I, I, I think there were over 60 people that had come along to listen to a detailed exposition, not just of the framework, but also about local experience in terms of how uh, a service could be initiated, what the different models for services were, what the common areas and what the different areas were for emphasis and how business cases might be assisted for places that were finding it difficult to instate. So I've just been struck by how enthusiastic the response has been to this particular IOF initiative. Perfect. Thank you very much Cyrus and I think we don't have any more questions for the, for the presentation so I would like to thank you very much on behalf of all the attendees for giving us such a good overview of the program and I would like to thank you as well all the attendees and Amgen employees for attending this webinar and I hope that this has met your expectation. Please if you have any additional comments or feedback email me and I will forward it to the relevant person and we will be sending you the recorded version in the next few days. Thank you very much to all of you and have a good end of the day. My pleasure. Thank you very Thank much. Bye-bye.